Good morning, Ebenezer family and friends. It is so good to be back with you. God has been so good. Are, are there any blessed people out there? Uh, if you've been blessed and are uh, just excited about another day of life that the Lord has given you, uh, can you just give God some hand clap of praise? Uh, clap those hands or put some emoticons in the chat, some praise hands, some hallelujahs, just thanking the Lord. I don't care what background we come from. It is always good to thank the Lord for his grace and mercy within our lives. We thank you for just all your prayers. Uh, so much has been going on at Ebenezer. We've got a lot of bereaved families, a lot of people that have been going through procedures. But you know what? We found out that our God is a healer. He's been very gracious. He's a comforter. He gives us peace. So I encourage you to uh, reach out to your neighbors. I want to thank you personally, even for those that are, are taking the time to uh, view uh, this internet connection. I've been talking to people who love the chat experience. And so uh, if you can uh, be a part of that, hey, feel free. Uh, you can take those phones and um, you can connect via our app, but also you can use your phone and look at the TV at the same time. So we know many of you are using smart TVs, but we say thank you, thank you, as we uh, just want an experience where we have community, we have fellowship even online. Uh, the Lord is so good. Uh, we have a lot of things that are on our internet connection, ebcnc.com, uh, where we are really walking out being living epistles. Uh, we want God to use us in wonderful ways to impact those that are around us. Uh, on our website, we've got uh, Monday Manna, we've got Tuesday Noonday Bible Study, we've got Wednesday Bible Study at 7 o'clock on that virtual connection, uh, going through the books of Genesis and also the book of Hebrews. And uh, it's been just an outstanding uh, learning process as we learn together God's Word. Don't forget about our Thursday Bible study, in-person Bible study, 6 to 7, right in the sanctuary, where we're going through the book of 1 Corinthians. And that's very interactive. Uh, people are putting forth questions, and we're applying that to our lives. Uh, don't forget about the pray for our 845 and our 1045 in-person service, and of course, our 10 o'clock online. Um, the Lord has just uh, really uh, caused us to connect with so many different people. I was actually at a funeral uh, a week back or a couple weeks ago. And um, there, this lady ran up to me and she said, Pastor Woods, Pastor Woods. And I really didn't know her right off hand. Uh, and she says, I see you all the time online. And she lives in another state, another area. And I just found that encouraging as God's word is just going for uh, to touch people's lives that uh, we can grow in him. I want to thank you for your giving. Uh, it's been a uh, amazing journey also with that. God wants us to be cheerful givers. He wants us to purpose in our heart. He also goes on and tells us that he'll make all grace abound, that we'll have uh, sufficiency, all sufficiency in everything for every good work. And so I encourage you, stay close to the Lord, stay, keep being a cheerful, cheerful giver. And we thank you for that. Whether you're giving it um, through our app or you're sending in a secure mailbox or you're in our in-person service, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I am ready to get in the word. If you look at my background, uh, they're kind of hands that are sticking up, looking up to heaven. We're going back to the basics and we're still dealing with our relational issues with God, dependency versus independency. And I'm telling you, um, we are going to really look at uh, being dependent on God and also get some insight when we are independent of God's will. Um, what can be repercussions for that? So I want you to prepare your hearts as we go into a time of worship, seeking his face, and we'll see you soon. Today's scripture will be from Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 8. Comfort for God's people. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her, her hard service has been completed, that her service, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up every mountain and every hill made low. 
The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his book. When he reached down his hand for me, when he reached down his hand for me, I was lost and undone. Without God, the Son, but then he reached way down his hand for me. Do you know what I'm talking about? When my Savior reached down for me. When he reached down his hand for me, I was lost and undone without my God and his son. But then he reached down his hand for me and he touched me oh he touched me have you been touched and all oh, the joy that floods my soul you know something Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. I am so glad he touched us. Any hallelujahs out there um, that God took time to care for us to love us. And I'm telling you, that is good, good news. Before we go any further, just want to go into a, a time of a prayer. And I want you to pray also that God will speak to your heart, give you what you need for today and the upcoming days. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for who you are. Thank you for being so gracious, for touching us, for your love. I pray for those who are uh, looking in, uh, listening, uh, that may not be saved today, that today be their day, that they will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you raised them from the dead and you said they would be saved. Let them know it's by grace through faith and not of themselves. It is a gift from you. Oh, that they embrace that gift today. Now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Would you teach us? Would you guide us? Would you lead us into all truth? Would you make this word so plain, so easy to be understood that even a small child can be transformed to be like you? Uh, we love you today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, well, let's get back into um, our memory scripture. We're in Back to the Basics, and we um, just uh, I've just been led to go through this particular scripture to memorize. So all of us, we have been reading it aloud uh, so it can get into our minds and seep down into our hearts. And that's uh, James 1, 26 and 1, 27. So prepare yourself, get your notepads, however you engage yourself as we uh, go through this memory scripture. James 1, 26, would you read with me? If anyone amongst you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, 
this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. It's been heavy. We've been doing that in our in-person services also. And I'm telling you, every time I say that, it just gets deeper and deeper, uh, just the way we should walk in the Lord. Getting back to the subtopic of back to the basics that um, uh, saints had given me, young people, we're going to be talking today again about our dependence uh, versus independence when it comes to uh, our relationship with God. So our whole focus should be to be dependent on him. But so often uh, we can step off and be independent of God's will. Uh, today, I'm actually I'm going to really peer into group dependency. I know you're like group dependency. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you within the scriptures. Um, let's go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 42. And I want us to focus in on that fifth verse, Jeremiah chapter 42 and five. It reads, so they said to Jeremiah, let the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. If we do not do according to everything which the Lord your God sends us by you. Listen to that again. So this is a heavy scripture, a heavy section of scriptures. Jeremiah 42, 5. So they said to Jeremiah, let the Lord be true and faithful witness between us if we do not do according to everything which the Lord your God sends us by you. I want to uh, speak from a subject today. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Yes, speak, Lord. Uh, the last time we were together, we were actually dealing with uh, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And it, it was my desire really to continue on uh, with that whole scenario. But in my personal study, I was reading through the book of Jeremiah and I'm um, just kind of going through it. And in this particular um, chapter was just impressed in my heart. I, it was really, I've gone through this so many times. And, and really, if you have followed me all these years, I've never preached this particular chapter or uh, actually did a study on this particular chapter. I've been in the 43rd chapter, other chapters, but this is kind of one of those obscure chapters. You know, we kind of read through, we kind of move on uh, to other part. But I am telling you, I was reading and God just slowed me down and I had to really go back and dig and study uh, to understand what was going on within this particular uh, chapter. So uh, I, I welcome you along with me on the journey today. Time frame is uh, 6th century um, B.C. Uh, it's during the final years of, of Judah uh, as, a, as a kingdom, in a sense. Um, a lot has happened to get to where we're going to pick up today. Uh, Jeremiah, uh, the prophet of the time, known as a weeping prophet, uh, he gets prophecies from the Lord that are just not popular. Um, he has to tell the people that, you know what, if you don't get right, God is going to allow the Babylonians uh, to come in and to drag many of you off to the Babylonian lands or to Babylon. And he's going to leave a remnant here, but they're still going to be under uh, the Babylonian captivity. The uh, people don't believe. They continue on doing what they want to do. Um, they get mad at um, Jeremiah because he's given this uh, contrary um, prophecy. Other prophets have come forward and said, oh, it's going to be okay. Um, Babylon is not going to mess with anybody, all of these things. And so, of course, the people gravitate to a good prophecy, a prophecy of uh, prosperity, but that was not from God. Uh, consequently, uh, Jeremiah Again, uh, he really goes through within his life uh, trying to hold forth God's word and not uh, really uh, bow under the pressures of other people. And that's the tough. When, when, you, when you are desiring to be dependent on God, uh, you're going to have to go through some stuff because some people are not going to see what you see. They're not going to understand you all the time. And here is Jeremiah. So Jeremiah's prophecies come true. Uh, the people uh, continued in their way. They find themselves now uh, under uh, Babylonian rule. Um, there's a remnant that's left in Judah. 
A majority of them have been dragged off. That's where uh, we connect with Daniel and other, uh, the Hebrew boys, all of those things. And so while they're here, the people are broken. The people of Judah are broken. They realize, okay, Jeremiah, you, you're right. What do we do now? And so that remnant that's left in Judah, they're like, do we run? You know, do we, you know, go to another place to try to escape this? And Jeremiah had already prophesied that God said it's going to come and you're just going to have to deal with it. Don't try to escape. And so now the people's hearts are really um, softened to ask Jeremiah in humility, OK, we need to hear a word from the Lord. So let's pick up Jeremiah 42 and 1. Now all the captains of the forces, Jehananan, the son of Korea, uh, Jaznaiah, the son of Hashai, and all the people from the least to the greatest came near and said to Jeremiah the prophet, please let our petition be acceptable to you and pray for us to the Lord your God for all this remnant. Listen to this. Since we are left but a few of many, as you can see that the Lord your God may show us the way in which we should walk and the thing we should do. Here's, here's our first point. Show me the way. Show me the way. Uh, sadly, because of their disobedience, they find themselves in this situation. And, and saints, we, we, we really need to look at our lives. A lot of things that we're struggling through is simply because we have been disobedient to God. We have not been dependent on God. Our relationship has not been where um, God would desire it to be. He loves us so much, and we have uh, gone off to dance with the enemy. Uh, they are trying to side here, these uh, Judeans, uh, whether they should try to escape this, this brutality that's been put upon them because of their uh, struggles because of their issues, because of their choice to uh, live in a, a life of disobedience to God. And so here um, they, they, they come to Jeremiah, the prophet and say, okay, now we are ready to hear you. What will God have to do in, in your life, in our lives, to bring us to a state of humility to even desire to be dependent upon him? I think so many times when things are going well, we're just, you know, in our lives, we tend to not lean into God as close as, as we should. But we have to come to the point saying, God, speak, Lord. We, 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 need, to, we, we need to hear from you. Uh, maybe you find yourself in a situation just like this, that, uh, you know, the Babylonians have, Babylonians have not come into your house and you're not in captivity. But because of your choices of the past, you're struggling. You're, you're going through some things right now, and I want you to know there is a word from the Lord. I, 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 I love Psalms 119 that really uh, kind of enlightens where we're going. And that 105 verse, it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We've got to ask God. We, we've got to say, Lord, I need you to speak. Speak, Lord. I need you to order my steps. No matter where you are, the enemy will tell us, hey, don't, don't pray to God. You know, you already messed up. You already made a bad decision. But I'm telling you, according to God's word, that that's when we run to God. We run to Abba. We run to daddy and say, okay, I have made a mistake. Please forgive me. Show me your way. Look at Jeremiah 42, 4, as we build on this. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard, indeed, I will pray to the Lord your God according to your words, and it shall be that whatever the Lord answers you, I will declare to you, I will keep nothing back from you. Here's the next point, whatever. Yes, whatever. I know you hear that a lot in different terms, so I do need to define it. This whatever is used to emphasize a lack of restriction in referring to anything or amount, no matter what. Let's look closely at this scripture again, because I want to show you some things that they are committing to as they're asking Jeremiah, okay, we realize you were right all along. 
uh, we 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 really treated you bad. We talked about you. We laughed at you. Now we find ourselves in a situation. We realize that you had a connection all the time. W will you pray for us? Jeremiah 42, 4. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard. Indeed, I will pray to the Lord your God according to your words. Because you've asked, because you have come in a state of humility, you want the Lord to speak. I'm, I'm going to do it for you. And it shall be, here it is, that whatever, that, that's a big word. That's a big word. When you go to God, you're like, God, whatever you say, I'll do. Whatever, whatever, whatever you put forth, that's what's for me. Whatever the Lord answers you, uh, Jeremiah says, I will declare to you. And, and also Jeremiah is, is actually stepping out again because he knows a God that, that, that sometimes does not give you good news. And so Jeremiah says, I am willing. I am willing to seek the Lord. And whatever he says in this situation, whether you should stay or you should go, I'm going to tell you, I will keep nothing back from you. We must understand that the Lord's Thoughts and ways are not like ours so many times. Any amens out there? Not. Let me show you in Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. God thinks differently. Yes, he, he does. He, he thinks differently. And that's why we have to submit ourselves to him. We have to become dependent on his will so that we can tr be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Isaiah 59, 55 and 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the God we serve. And so, so, so often we, we struggle because we're like, man, I want it this way. I want it this way. And God's like, no, this is the right way. But because we were conceived in iniquity and our flesh is fighting against us and we got principalities and rulers of darkness uh, that, are, that are coming up against us, so often we find ourselves in the midst of a struggle. And that's what we got to say, speak, Lord, speak, Lord. Are we ready to hear what God has to say. I know, I know. I want you to think about, are you ready to hear what God has to say for you in your life? Are you ready to actually take what he tells you to do? We're going to walk through this. Uh, this is a state God wants us to get to of being totally dependent on him. Yes, dependent. Can you put uh, in the chat, dependent? Wherever you're standing, send us to say dependent, dependent. Uh, this is heavy. God spoke a word uh, that was that was hard for me. It's been hard for me. Every time I go through the scriptures and I read uh, the book of Isaiah around the uh, 20th chapter and the third verse, I'm just going to read it to you and then we're going to talk a little bit about it. This is a hard word. It says, then the Lord said, just as my servant Isaiah, uh, the prophet, has walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and a wonder against Egypt and Ethiopia, so shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians as prisoners and the Ethiopians as captives. Young and old, naked and barefoot, with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. Yes, God uses Isaiah the prophet as a symbol. He's like, okay, I want you to walk naked and barefoot. And this is going to show again what's going to happen to my people because of their disobedience. And I'm like, wow, God, whatever. Be careful. When we ask God, whatever you say and whatever you do, we can find ourselves in some situations. But I am telling you, that's where the peace of God resides. Look at Jeremiah 42, 5. Speak, Lord. So they said to Jeremiah, let the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. If we do not do according to everything which the Lord your God sends us by you. Here's, here's the next point. If you'll notice as we go through the outline, these points, they're one word, one word, because they're heavy, they're powerful. Uh, the, the word is everything. Yes. Can you put in the chat? Everything, everything. Wherever you're standing, say, say everything. So whatever, huge. It encompasses a lot. Everything, huge. It encompasses a lot, a lot. And, and, and notice this. So they confirm whatever 
with everything. I'm going to try to say that again. They confirm whatever with everything. So whatever you say, God, we're going to do everything that you say. Wow. Again, I, I know the end of this book. And, and, and so uh, they're not going to hold truth to this. But I really believe at this time in their heart, they want to believe this. And we have to be very careful uh, that that we uh, uh, make choices and decisions that when we say whatever, and then we say everything, that we are really at the point of trusting uh, the Lord. Uh, Jeremiah 42, 5, notice their affirmation again. So they said to Jeremiah, let the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us if we do not do according to, here it is, everything which the Lord your God sends us by you. Are we truly willing to do everything that the Lord asks us to do? Yeah, I just I just want you to ponder that. Don't, don't, don't say amen. You don't have to say amen. I just want you to think everything that God is asking you to do. I, I remember I was I was taken through a little trial. Um, many years ago, uh, I had the opportunity, someone asked me to go to Haiti on a, a missions trip. I'll be honest, I, I've been blessed to travel literally all around the world. I just didn't want to go. I, I wanted to stay at home uh, in my bed, just chill, <laughs> go to church. I didn't want to go all the way to Haiti. It just, it just was, I was not feeling it. Uh, but in that, God wanted me to go. And this is one of those times I was struggling against my flesh. I was making all kinds of excuses. I've got a, a real close friend. He's a paratrooper. Uh, he decided he was going to go. And that was my sign. It was kind of a fleece. I was like, you know, if, if he goes, he got my back. You know, I would go. And I was hoping that he wouldn't go. But guess what? God's will was bigger than my, my will. Uh, we we did. We got to Haiti. We were able to minister. We were able to share the good news. And it was about two weeks after we had flown out that the earthquake, the huge earthquake came. And I was like, God, you're in an own time, God. But sometimes as we ask God to speak, we want to hear from him that we're going to have to go places that we really don't want to go. But later when we look back on it, we can say, man, God, thank you for ordering our steps. Now look at Jeremiah 42 and 6. So whatever, then they said everything, uh, whether it pleasing or displeasing, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we send you that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. One word, one word, point, obedience. Obedience. So we've got whatever, we've got everything, and then we've got obedience. Uh, author uh, John H. Uh, Samus, the lyrics uh, in 1887, um, this is one of my uh, favorite songs because it's heavy. He wrote this about trusting and obeying. He said, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toll he does richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but it's blessed if we trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay for the favor he shows, for the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. I, I love that, that, that final stand that says, then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do. Where he sins, we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. You know the chorus, trust and obey, but there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Uh, th this obedience is, is, is big. It's huge in our lives. Uh, I, I, I remember we had a, a German shepherd. His name was Max. And I, I knew when I, I looked at that, that, that puppy's eye, when I got him, he, with circumstances, it's like, we're we going to have problems, right? And he started to grow up a little ram, rambunctious. So we took him to training. We took him to a training, training class. And I, I just realized when we went to training class, all the other little puppies, they were so excited, just jumping around. And they were, they were, you know, falling through. But my puppy was like, he just sat there like, I don't like these people. 
I don't like the trainer. I don't like it was just terrible. I was like, this is not going to be the journey. I mean, I you know, we we look at those shows, you got German Shepherds, they do all those things. They smell when you go through uh the, the airport, they're smelling you, they sitting down, all that. That was not our dog. He just had a mindset of his own. And 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 obedience was a hard issue. And I believe that's what we struggle with in our lives. We've got so many Christians, I, I believe, that are truly saved, but we're having a hard time obeying because we want to have our mindset, but we got to say, speak, Lord, speak, Lord. The apostle John writes this in 1 John 3, 21. He says, dear friends, if we feel at ease in the presence of God, we will have the courage to come near to him. That 22nd verse, he will give us whatever we ask. Listen to this though, because we obey. Can you put in the chat, obey him and do what pleases him. Uh, to, to obey God can be tough. I want to say that again. To obey God can be tough. Any amens, any agreement out there, it can be tough, but it brings so much peace when we become dependent on God, dependent on his will. But but there are consequences. Hear me, hear me as we go through these scriptures. There, there, there are consequences to being disobedient to God's will. Uh, remember saying the prophet, uh, he, he rebuked uh, King Saul after he refused to do it God's way. And I just want to get script. We actually taught about this a, a, a few Sundays ago, 1 Samuel 15, 22. Tell me, Samuel said, does the Lord really want sacrifices and offerings? No, he doesn't want your sacrifices. He wants you to, there it is, to obey him, 1 Samuel 15, 23, rebelling against God or disobeying him because you are proud is just as bad as worshiping idols or asking them for advice. You refuse to do what God told you. So God has decided that you can't be king. Look at that 54th verse, though. I have sinned, Saul admitted. I disobeyed both you and the Lord. I was afraid of the army and I listened to them instead. 25th verse. Please forgive me, he says, and come back with me so I can worship the Lord. This is the, the people of Judah. They're that same mindset. But notice, uh, Samuel says, no, Samuel replied, you disobey the Lord and I won't go back with you. Now, the Lord has said that you can't be king of Israel any longer. Speak, Lord. There are consequences when we choose a path of disobedience to God's will. The, the, the people of Judah made a vow. They made a vow. And, and then this is a concern as we're, we're kind of trying to pull this together. Uh, Ecclesiastes, contemporary English verse, it talks about when we make promises or vows in that fifth uh, chapter in the fourth verse. It says, God doesn't like fools. So don't be slow to keep your promises to God. It's better not to make a promise at all than to make one and not keep it. Speak, Lord. So when God speaks and we're, we're like, whatever, and we're like everything and, and we're confirming all of these things, please understand we are saying, I'm going to be a, obedient to you, but we're, we're making a vow. We're making a promise to God. And, and, and technically, because we are saved and because he's given us the gift of the Holy Spirit, we're no longer ourselves. And that Romans 12, 1, it talks about, again, and being transformed, that we're going to live a life of sacrifice before God. Uh, look, look, look at this, this final uh, verse as we're pulling this together, Jeremiah 42 and 7. And it happened. Jeremiah's like, okay, you said all of these things. I'm going to seek God on your behalf. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cry. And it happened after 10 days. Can you, can you put in the chat the number 10? Number 10, wherever you're standing, say 10. 10. I mean, they've gone through all of this, this confirmation. God, we are going to be with you. We love you. Whatever you say, we're going to be obedient. Uh, we're we're, we're going to follow through on this. All of these things, he, he, Jeremiah prays, and 10 days later, that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Uh, final point, waiting. Yes, waiting. When we decide to walk and be dependent on God, sometimes God is going to put us in a holding line where we have to wait that we can think about what we've actually said. We, we can think about what we've actually prayed, that we can really decide in those moments, okay, am I, am I all, all on board? And so here, um, um, Jeremiah, 
lifts it up to God. He knows God speaks to him. He's the prophet. He's heard the word. This is a, a true prophet of God, but yet God does not answer immediately. He waits 10 days. Uh, Psalms 27, 14 talks about uh, why God uh, does this for us. He says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. There is important that there's, there's an important thing that occurs when we wait on the Lord, that there's a change that takes place. But we, we start to realize that it's all about God. Getting back to, to my dog, Max, I, I remember one part of the training was that he had to wait. He had to go over and, 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 and we could put food down and he would have to stay there and wait because he understood we were in charge. And, and he never really got it right because he would always be looking at the food instead of us. And he would just be kind of listening one one ear uh, when we would give that command. But we have to be attentive to God and we have to have our eyes on the Lord and say, God, I am willing to wait no matter how long it takes. I, I'm telling you, can you scream out wait? Can you put wait in the chat? We've got to wait on the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31 says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 10 days. It, it takes 10 days for God to answer Jeremiah uh, that's close to give a word. And the word confirms what he's already said. I want the people of Judah to stay right where they are. I'm going to eventually deliver them, but they need to stay right where I told them before. Uh, you remember uh, Daniel, uh, Old Testament, a prophet. Also, we've been talking about a lot of prophets today. Uh, he, he had a contact with God and he was praying uh, 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 to the Lord. He was dependent on God's will. Uh, but notice what happens in Daniel chapter 10 around that 12th verse. Then he said to me, do not fear Daniel for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And so Sarah, uh, same thing with Jeremiah, the first day that he sought the Lord and, and, and gave that, uh, that question saying, Lord, I, I need you to speak. His words were heard, but notice, and after, and, and I have come because of your words, Daniel 10, 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Can you put 21 in the chat? Wherever you're standing, say 21, 21. Yeah, we got 10 with Jeremiah, but with Daniel, close man of God, praying. We, 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 21 days. So we find out what was happening. God hears immediately, but the enemy is fighting. Yes, he's sitting, uh, sending principalities and rulers of darkness to try to hinder the word of God. But I am telling you, God is always an on-time God. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes uh, came to help me for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia 14 verse now I have come to make you understand speak Lord speak Lord what will happen to your people in the latter days for the vision refers to many days yet to come. Thank God for speaking. Thank God for speaking. But we, we've got to realize the only way we can really hear from God, uh, God had to do something amazing because that we were conceived in iniquity. He had to send Jesus, which was the manifestation of who he was from heaven to earth to walk among men. I am so glad for Christ that would say, you know what? The only way y'all going to hear from God, I got to become a hundred percent man, get a hundred percent God. There was a time when he was teaching teaching in Matthew 7, 28. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teeth. They, they were just amazed. It was like uh, the 29th verse, for he taught them as one having authority and not as a scribe. They were like, nobody ever taught us like this. We we never heard it because it was God manifested. In his they said, speak, Lord, to us. But I'm so glad that he didn't uh, stop right there. But he, we find him in the garden of Gethsemane. We was there last Sunday. We find him being betrayed by Judas Iscariot, being and all night long, going down the Via Della Rosa, making his way to the cross of Calvary, nails in his hands and nails in his feet. But I, I, I'm so glad that he spoke on that cross. He, he spoke so much, but this is the one that blesses me in Luke 23, 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. Are there any amens and hallelujahs thanking God for carrying our griefs and bearing our pains on the cross of Calvary? He died on that cross of 
conference. They put them in a cold grave, but it gives me great pleasure to let you know it wasn't 10 days. It wasn't 21 days. It wasn't three weeks, but three days later, he got up with all power and all glory, and now he's praying for us that we can hear the voice of God and apply it to our lives and be dependent on everything he tells us to do. Saints, we are in tough times. There are a lot of things to get us distracted, but we have a loving God that's saying, hey, here's the way, walk in it. Yes, to follow him, there's some groups that we can't be a part of, to follow him. There's some places that we're not gonna be comfortable in to follow him. Sometimes we're gonna have to struggle through, but to know that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. My question to you, are you in God's will? Are you dependent on God's will? Is your relationship growing? Oh, I pray that it is. But if it's not, I, I want you to ask yourself, am I saved? To be saved is to have a testimony that a change is taking place in your life. It, it, it can't be I go to church or I'm just connected uh, with our internet. No, no, no. It, it's got to be that, hey, I've got a relationship. God uh, is working in my life. I, I'm not all that I, 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 I should be, but I, I thank God I'm not what I used to be. Do you have that testimony that you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, said you will be saved? Do you know it's by grace through faith and not of yourself? It's a gift from God. Have you accepted that gift from him? If not today, would you reach out? Would you confess that you are a sinner, that you need a savior? You, you need the Lord to speak. And I'm telling you, if you do it in sincerity, he will speak to you. But be careful. That affirmation that we talked about, will you be obedient? Will you say, God, whatever, whatever you would have me to do, I'm going to walk in it. Will you say, Lord, it's everything. Speak, Lord. To the saints, I want to encourage you. God wants to use us in beautiful ways during this season and time. There's so many souls to be saved and brought to the knowledge of the truth every second every moment let's stay in tune with the lord in hearing his voice would you pray with me father i thank you so much for this word heavy word lord thank you for this 42nd chapter of jeremiah uh, thank you lord for slowing me down to just go back and to peer into the scriptures thank you for applying this to our lives lord we ask you to speak lord Help us to obey you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let Jesus lead you all the way. Let Jesus lead you all the way. From earth to glory. Oh
to have you. He led my brother. He led him all the way. He led my brother all the way from earth to glory. You can tell the story. Let Jesus lead you all the way. Come on. Stand up on your feet. Loosen up in here. Give God some glory. Here we go.